Thank you for the introduction, Dr. Ellabogan. Again, my name is Anna. Um, I am going to be talking about the research I did this summer in the JIADEF lab, investigating the microglia activation in the brains of Alzheimer's disease piece and two mutation carriers. And before I get into the project and the research, I want to give a little bit of background information about what Alzheimer's is actually doing in your brain. As you probably know, AD is a neurodegenerative disease that accounts for a majority of dementia cases. And its pathology is characterized by a buildup of these amyloid beta plaques and neurofibrillary tangles, which in turn causes damage to the surrounding neurons and a lot of brain inflammation. The brain inflammation is why microglia, the innate immune cells in the brain, are of particular interest as a possible treatment. Um, early onset, Alzheimer's disease specifically, is caused by genetic mutations of PSM2 genes. And this gene modulates microglial phenotypes. So we see in early onset AD that there are more activated microglia, but we don't really know what is causing this activation. We hypothesize that there is something in our body, something that's happening to our bodies as we naturally age that are activating these things. As we age, there is a natural accumulation of double-stranded DNA. And when DNA accumulates, it causes problems with cell signaling and inflammation. So I wanted to look at if we see more higher levels of this double-stranded DNA in the activated microglia in these PSN2 carriers. If that's the case, we would expect to see stronger, more double-stranded DNA and more activated microglia in these PSN2 carriers with Alzheimer's disease. To test this, I took 14 samples from the prefrontal cortex of PSN2 carriers and stained them using immunohistochemistry techniques. I started by deparaffinizing them and adding a blocking buffer, which prevents any non-cell specific binding. And then I added a primary antibodies, IBA1 to stain the microglia, DSDNA to stain the double-stranded DNA, and MAP2 to stain the neurons. This was allowed to incubate overnight, and then the next day we came back and added in our secondary antibodies. Secondary antibodies bind to the primary and fluoresce. So this is going to allow us to image and analyze the cells of interest. A counter stain was then applied and the slides were mounted with floor mount with DAPI to stain the nuclei of the cells. This, after the slides is dried, they were imaged using a Z710 confocal microscope the, once I found an area of interest on the slide, I, with good microglia and neuron staining, I then took slices of the image in a stack to create a 3D Z stack. This would allow me to perform a 3D analysis of the, the different microglia. The stacks were then analyzed using MSJ and a Mars image analysis software. Here's a picture of what the images look like. As you can see on the left, we have the blue staining the nuclei of the cell, the red staining the double-stranded DNA, and the microglia are green. As you can see in the top right, you do see some red double-stranded DNA in the microglia. To quantify that, a mask was applied over the microglia, and then I was, allowed, I was able to get a data for the intensity of that red signal inside the microglia. And then I also went through and individually traced all the microglia in each of the slides. So there were three images for each of the 14 samples that we had. And whenever I did this, MRS gave me a ton of data about the different filaments. I really wanted to compare the microglial phenotypes that I saw in the AD versus control brains. And to do this, I compared the branch, the number of branch terminal points and also the filament lengths. We would expect in these AD brains that there will be more activated, angry, amoeboid microglia. So I would expect shorter filaments and less branching because they're more amoeboid. But when I looked at the data that I got, that is not what I saw. On my left in the gray, we see the control. And on the right, we have our blue piece and two carriers. And when you compare the two, the, there was not a significant difference in either the process length or the number of branch terminal points, which went against our hypothesis. This could be because I used five micron slides, which is extremely thin. And I did see a lot of fragment in microglia, so it's very possible that the slides were just too thin and cut off a lot of the arms that I would otherwise be able to analyze. To summarize the research, 
I wanted to see if there's a difference between the microglia activation and in the brains of piece and two carriers. My data, when I analyzed the data that I got, there was no significant difference between the microglia complexity and control versus AD brains. And I think this was because I used five micron slides. So in future studies, I will use thicker slides, closer to 20 microns. And I can also continue to further analyze the double-stranded DNA data that I did get because I generated it. But in such a short program with only eight weeks, I did not have time to export and analyze that. Hopefully, by better understanding the things that are driving this microglial activation and brain inflammation, we can form better treatment options for Alzheimer's disease. I want to thank everyone in the UW Medicine Department of Neurology and the GIDEV lab for helping me design the project and teaching me all the techniques required to do it, specifically my PI, Dr. Sumi Jayadev, my mentor, Dr. Prater, and Lexi for helping me do everything with this. I also want to thank everyone who worked very hard to make this research program possible. It's been an extremely educational experience. So thank you all and thank you for your attention today.